accomplished author, folks. You know what I mean? He just completed his first book. So please show my man the video. See you next time. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, my name is Phil. Uh, oh, how do you feel tonight? Uh, <laughs> well, I got a real name, man. All right, all right, all right. Here. Yeah, Ethereal is the name of the book. Um, basically, I'm using it as a way of moving around the country. It's uh, $15. It's basically a book of poetry, uh, art, lyrical prose, a bit of metaphysics. It's basically to help define the higher self and the physical self and its influences to better understanding yourself. Work. And so I'm going to do uh, a few things. One that's uh, old, something new, and something that's black and blue. So something. First poem out of the book. Your shadow is all that protects me from the sun. The mountain now my angel. My first, my, my footprints in the marshland will be my lone road map home. It seems that my own weight has become my handicap. What lies beyond you, I ask, as if expecting a response, if I could ever speak so loud. I close my eyes and hear my heart in tempo with the call of the birds overhead. It must be going my way. The sun says this farewell, and you now glow with the warm aura of emotion. I can't expect Gaia to feel for me. However, I can certainly feel her influence, as if she's humming, calling for harmony. There are whispers in the wind, vibrations in the breeze, a soft symphony behind what seems so obvious. At your feet, your face is but a silhouette before the setting sun. What lies beyond you, I ask again. Somehow I feel like my question was answered. So I walk up to you, wanting nothing but but an embrace, to feel you in return. With such beauty, I feel like you've given me something back, or that I'm somehow repaying you. I climb straight up to your face and rest on your crown, I look around and notice I left no trail. From here, it seems like there's no direction. There's no way down, no pass, no forward, just the peak and the nap. I realize here there is no other side. There's only a pinnacle. A point where signs meet, where all is seen but nothing tangible, that all can be experienced in theory. And shrouded in such wonder, I ask myself, where from here? After all, there's nothing but down. I look straight out and I realize there are other peaks in the distance, and she whispers, there are other lives to live. Thank you. And so, um, this one's a bit new, so bear with me. I uh, wrote it like as soon as I woke up this morning. All right. So, yeah. yeah. You wrote a book. It's one of those when you're just like, oh shit, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, I feel even now, floating aimlessly, coasting along at sea, caught in the rift of subtle subjectivity. Daydreaming in the broken morning, I raise my pen in greeting and lower in the fleeting feeling. I raise my gaze to the sun's rays and praise of a new day, then I patiently line my walls with epiphanies as I metaphorically pet my insecurities gently. I hold tight to these words so relentlessly that by humming my own melody, I will be carried with the symphony into blissful eternity. Whenever I'm alone, I'm not lonely, I'm humbly. To offer the soul of sailing to infinity is the end of personal suffering. Become a singularity in the sea of awakening, one with the true glowing light endlessly, bathed in the warmth of sincerity, so that I may be cleansed and rebirthed in loving mercy. So I may learn to so so that I may learn what it means to be me truly. Now, one quick one just for the black and blue, a little punch in the eye. Yeah, you know. Punch with love. Oh, it's love, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to punch in the eye and put it off. Take a seat. Take a seat. <laughs> so, uh, so, this is a while back, too. The several severed signs on the side of the road just makes me wonder if I was born cold because everything I had worth anything I sold just for a taste of freedom. The man who leads forward stands on his head, doesn't listen, but hears every word that's been said. He seems to know everybody but doesn't have any friends because in the end he's all that he's thinking. An old man with squinted eyes talks with a slur, says he's lived quite a life, but what he remembers is a blur. It says he's traveled the world, but where he's not sure. I guess we both wasted our breath. So a circle of men, a, a circle of men with gray hair, try to make our decisions, rather not help, but force their own opinions. They're all shaking hands to avoid ever listening. These people have lost their purpose. The women in rags handing out flowers, spends a day guilting people flowers for hours. Well, why do you give money to someone who went spending on showers? Is their health not worth investing? 
So I sit here thinking by the side of the lake, maybe all my decisions have been slight mistakes, and how long it will be until someone takes my place laying in my bed next to it. The artist in his pen speaks nothing but silence, the most peaceful of men, but his visions are of violence. He takes our round minds and forcefully untires us, but they're just so many unwilling. Thank you. Whoa! time, I just want to get this out. Uh, this I uh, just put out a book of, I don't know, the 12th. Uh, it's basically helping me move around the country. Uh, if anyone can help me out, pick up a book. If you like what you hear, please do. Anyway, get right into it. So I'm going to do a passage and hopefully a poem. I'm going to get right into it. I have a strong belief that the transcendental dimensions are entwined with the ones that we set to reality. I'm at least positive in my own experience of the seams that tie and entangle other dimensions to ours. There is no doubt that there are glitches of sorts, such as a scientist having an effect on an experiment by just observing it, happenings of a nature that defy the rules of the rational mind. However, such rules are the reason for our nearsightedness. They inhibit our ability to understand the significance by creating limits such as a spirit trying to interact with one of this physical realm, often what a spirit tries to get to Often what a spirit uses to get our attention is startling to us, but also, but also just a matter of interpretation, and often done in the greatest sincerity. We have just been sensitized to the unknown where we almost fear the transcendental. That being said, there should be some means of consciously interacting. There should be some way to enhance our frequency or develop ourselves to the point of being able to see through the silk screens of reality. To gain more of an ability to interact with the other layers of perception, oh, with the other layers, Perception being our framework of reality is all that truly defines us from, from the other dimensions. However, your perception is in constant flux from your beliefs to your mood, though I believe there are many ways to enhance your perception, such as learning about the world around you, those unseen, silencing the static of the mind, developing your skills at something, learning something new, having philosophical thoughts, as well as engaging in deep conversation. Similar, similar to miracles which can which are often mistaken as real, though it's just the inability to comprehend the process or see it from the perspective of the person performing. The concept of coincidence is just as dilutable, but less subjective. We are always told there's no such thing as coincidence, that we shouldn't look too much into things, so there's no point. I believe there's a reason for such a common thought pattern, but I digress. The fact is, coincidence is very real, and our key is to understanding our connection to the world around us. A good example of this is total solar eclipses. They occur very infrequently and are recorded by civilizations around the world, can be anticipated are, are more and are important to understanding other factors of physics by reference. For example, total solar eclipses only occur because the sun, whose, di whose diameter is about 400 times that of the moon, is coinc coincidentally 400 times as far away from the Earth. Therefore, if the moon were to orbit just a little further out or just a little smaller, it would never occur. This all being said, my whole life I've been on the lookout for coincidences, things that happen in sequence, playing along with the clock, a chance to run in with someone, a phone call from someone as you thought of them, meeting someone new when you were given the opportunity to avoid such an instance, deja vu, foresight, etc. These appear as mere chance to someone unaware to look deeper. The only way to interpret such instances is by filtering through your belief system and giving it value based off your experiences. There are many works on the subject of coincidence and synchronicity. Some theorize the ability to manipulate coincidence by learning it, learning about the value of it based on unified truth, to cause what could be described as artificial miracles, or understanding the flow or layers to the point of control. I can certainly agree with the fact that coincidence is similar to a wink, wink from God in the sense that you are given an opportunity to witness a little bit of nature's humor, or you are just being contacted by another layer of reality in some incom incomprehensible way. My belief is that coincidence is, in fact, you realizing the flow of nature, like a surfer waking up in the midst of riding, riding inside a barreling wave. We are looking to learn how, how to remain awake, but not just catch glimpses of the flow that we ride, to see the opportunity in the moment. It's the seamless flow of our reality, with a new ability to know what we're looking at, i.e. seeing through our past. The individual soul surfing along the speeding cylindrical s s stream of synchronicity. It's an instantaneous breaking through of your conditioning into the collective consciousness and the divine order of our ant farm-like planet, the cosmic surfer dipping his or her hand into the curve. I'm still far from grasping this concept and its gravity, but, I'm pay uh, but I'm, by, by paying attention to things such as reincurring themes, circles, returning to beginning and coincidences, I believe I've gained some bearing in my few years. I believe through these lessons that I've gained a better understanding of the true beauty in life. As a surfer in a rough swell, or as a boy who learns how to ride a skateboard, 
first becoming one with the board and the sidewalks, then developing control and abilities. That is, until the, he grows into a man who loses his dependence on him. The bird must first learn to walk, to fly, then to sur soar in order to realize what's left to achieve. I've always been told to never tell someone that they were free, for it loses all meaning. But I hope in some way I got that across. And I'm going really, really quick, I just want to get this out. The rising, or the rising flames of the infinite all encompasses and baptizes our childlike minds to breed a gust from below, prana, the wind under our wings. The young stars above look down on the chil chained children of man inside, knowing they remain alone, for they will never reach their realm built, never reach their realm built by physical boundaries, boundaries built by sheer stubborn thought, the cloak of common accustomed. Don't think this closed-minded mindset isn't man-made. It's an otherworldly tool of confusion and control on a secular scale. And within these, within the halls of life, rooted deep within the veins of home, grows a flower, a flower engulfed in the cold flames of wisdom, as well as doused in the ever-expanding ocean of consciousness. Emanating from the hollow depths of Gaia out to the vast openness of the ether, it is knowledge incarnate. It is the key to understanding this realm of reality. By condensing spirit to our dimensional construct, it's a fool's quest to explain, for it's so easy to just know that the flower of life's intent is to show, to show what little we actually know, built in the context of the all, that all is a whole, one mind, one soul. And somewhere between the ellipses of time sits the circle of masters, wading through the way of aeons, waiting to awake, projecting, projecting their message to those who line the surface. Their spirit flow, flows freely through the body of man. And once reawakened, they take form to guide the surface onward and upward, from mother to son. But first, the children of light, like the flaring candles, spark up in crowds of darkness, like infectious balls of flame, igniting the paper souls close enough to catch on with intents that one day illuminate the world. Such transcendence is not something granted, but it certainly can be earned, such as love, learned, or future forewarned. You may just be a flickering flame ready to be kindled, or a wooden mountain ready to be whittled, but in the end, we're all stuck somewhere in the middle, and our ambition shouldn't lay so low. Our intention should be to grow, to immerse ourselves in the flow and relearn what we already know, to praise the divine complexity and the intricate existence within. The change in us starts with you. The new age starts from within. So lose your eyes and open wide to embrace the new day. I must go, but we'll never part, so namaste. Yes, sir. <laughs>